and welcome once again to my channel if you are joining for the first time my name is dr brown thank you for joining today please don't forget to like share and subscribe at the end of the video today i'm trying to make a very quick video as to how i was able to ace and pass my plap 2 exam with just two weeks of intensive studies i believe right now as doctors most of us are working we have a very busy schedule and various reasons family commitment as well various reasons we do not have the luxury of time like we had did while we in medical school so in my case personally i was studying for the usmle step two exam because i had like a i could only dedicate two weeks for my plat two exams and this is what i learned and i'm just trying to share my experience to other people i don't believe in studying hard i believe in studying smart you know, i believe this exam you can ace this exam in just one go so this uh, i just want to share with you five tips that i believe would be essential to acing the plap 2 exams in one shot especially if you have a limited time frame okay it, it's always good if you have lots of time to prepare for the exam but if you are someone who you're pressed for time obviously work family commitment etc and you have little time i was able to ace this exam with just two weeks of intensive studies okay so let's jump right into it so as you know the exams is basically scored in three components uh, and each is marked out of total of four so we have the data gathering uh, which is also like history assessment and then you have the clinical management skills you know how you make your diagnosis the differential diagnosis stuff like that and then last but not the least interpersonal skills talking about how you relate to your patients okay this makes me jump into my first point i want to note interpersonal skills okay so this is how you can get a lot of marks from interpersonal skills and it can save you because if you look at my scores you know they're setting some of them score like a three four maybe sometimes even a two which you boost your scores from the other domains right and then it will help you pass that particular station all right so these are my take on how to really score high in interpersonal skills because most of the ones that i score four and three i basically did this so key to note set up right okay always when you get into the room and you mention your candidate number set up right okay it's very very important body language you realize that there are certain rooms that your exam now will not be around but it'll be recorded right so you're going to look at how you sit and everything you're talking to set up right make sure you're facing the patient okay don't slouch in the chair and then always ask after you introduce yourself and simulator you know are you the patient tells you their name always ask how do you want me to address you it's very very important it may be something that you know in the heat of the exam you might forget but it's very very important to ask this if they tell you i'm sandra whatever right just I always ask how do you want me to address you today okay and then before you make sure you incorporate words like just so we're on the same page what do you mean or i would like to ask you a few questions to clarify okay don't act like so the key here is that the patient or the simulator or the examiner knows that the patient has come and has come to seek your help your medical help and the patients are expected to ask questions okay so don't go like oh can i ask you a question okay use words like i would like to ask you a few questions to clarify or just so we are on the same page with your complaints so for me to better assist you i want to ask i would ask you a few questions to clarify or I'll ask you a few questions to to make sure we both understand each other use words like that okay that that those words would boost your interpersonal skills okay and usually you would have a preamble on the outside of the door so before you get in you will know which ones you want to use at what point in time but these are the words you want to use and then again always ask what concerns that you have or anything that you think i might have missed so find a way to incorporate it while you're taking your history so that you, this one's find a way to incorporate it during your whole six minutes six eight minutes you are with the patient or like with the simulator find a way to incorporate it you'd have to practice and everything i i like i said i'm, I'm really talking about two weeks i didn't have a lot of time to like practice with other people i think the only thing i practiced was seaman and i'll talk about it later in the video but most of these things i was just you know reciting to myself right and just making sure that i have i know that okay at this point i'm going to put it here and all that so make sure you put it and then let's disclose what case it was but let, it was very bizarre the preamble or the when you when you read the question on the outside it was very vague it was ambiguous like you don't know if you're going to cancel the patient if you are supposed to tell the patient what or you're supposed to make a diagnosis so i was just having a conversation trying to take a history 
and all that, nothing was really forthcoming. And I asked the patient, do you have any concerns? Or is there anything I might have missed? And then she goes like, okay, I'm a Jehovah witness and I don't want to have uh, blood for the surgery. And I think that was the key because trust me, like about six minutes into the exam, I did not have a clue of what I'm doing. I was just talking to the patient, talking to people, but immediately it clicked and I asked him, he mentioned that and then all of, all of a sudden there was something to talk about and i advised i was like okay on the day of surgery you're supposed to come with your card have you have you told us okay if you haven't told us this is the first time i'm going to note it in your in your on your file you know so, and i'll make sure it's on record so that you do not receive any blood at all you know, stuff like that and, and even with this particular picture that i'm talking about uh, the simulator i'm talking about i asked the earlier on sometimes they hear it but they are simulated for whatever reason maybe they know that okay if they say it too early they're giving you the clue so sometimes they wait till the end so if you ask it very early on they might not disclose because i remember i asked this at the beginning because i didn't know what i was doing but i repeated it so don't i mean the point is don't keep repeating it but also don't just say it once and then it's just like oh no con no concern so that's it no try to repeat it again maybe towards closer stage the six minutes and if she sees that you're struggling when you ask her for any concern she will give you a clue and that is that you jump on it and then you kill it. So this, uh, this is how to go about interpersonal skills. I believe if you do this, you ace that component. The next thing I want to talk about is complications. Okay, so you read a preamble and then probably they're asking you to cancel a patient or a client that's sitting in front of you. Just want to jump into and talk about, okay, infections, blood, DVT, whatnot. Okay, but the clue here I'm trying to help you is always remember that anesthesia complications can also be so always try to ask about have you experienced any reaction with anesthesia before okay and that could be where the clue is do you have any dentures you understand I've, i came across a case like that you have to think about com uh, anesthesia complication because that's where most of the patient's concern was you know because they had reacted to anesthesia in the past they've had surgery before but no bleeding no infection nothing their main issue was with anesthesia so always always ask okay i'm just trying to like highlight key components that you need to know because like praying for this exam in two weeks trust me there's a lot but there are key areas that you need to focus on okay and now the third thing i'm not sure if you've you're preparing for the plan you've come across this but people tell you oh, even if you get a diagnosis wrong it doesn't matter but I'm, I'm telling you, if you get a diagnosis wrong, you the chances of passing that station is very, very slim. Like chances are more than ninety percent of the time, if you get a diagnosis wrong, you will not pass that station. And it happened to me. All the stations I failed. I didn't fail because I didn't know what I was doing. I failed because I didn't get a diagnosis. And about three or four, I sort of had an idea of the diagnosis, but I wasn't so sure. So. Say for example, if it's a, if it's a rash, right? Instead of maybe saying chicken chicken pox, I'll probably say measles. You understand? And in my head, I was debating, but you have to pick one. You understand? It's a limited time. So always, always, that is why studying for the PLAB, you need to make sure that your, your management skills, your medical knowledge is intact because you would need to apply it. You need to get a diagnosis because if you don't get a diagnosis, what will happen is you will do well, you will take a very good history. Aside taking a good history, you would also have good interpersonal skills, but you realize that you 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 will not pass that station, and you probably fill the station by point one, point two. A lot of people come back and be like, "Oh, I failed the exam by point one. Mind you, you need to pass at least ten ten stations, okay? And that's also a minimum score, right? So it's always very important, okay? So make sure that you get a diagnosis, so your clinical knowledge must be on top. Do you understand? So always don't focus on just have to take a history and all that make sure that you are reading and you know how to diagnose most of the conditions all right the fourth point i want to jump on is the semen okay the semen there's no hard and fast rule you just need to practice again with me i only had two weeks so i practiced semen like i mean a couple of hours with my friends like i mean i got a house and you know there were people luckily for me there were there was a guy who was taking the exam same center same day same time same everything so we sort of rehearsed it together a few times what i want to let you know is that find a routine that works best for you and go through the routine go through the a b c d e find a routine that will help you remember most of the things because the thing is 
with semen there's a there's an adrenaline rush the probability of you because you have to go and pick the items and stuff like that right you have to they have to the examiner needs to see you do it so don't they say okay i'm going to give airway you have to go and pick up the airway you know you move and everything so you have to have like a systematic approach understand so you have to find a routine and rehearse it as much as possible find what works for you maybe the way someone will remind it like would uh, remind himself of the steps to go to might be different from how, how you would do that so find your best routine and go to it and then make sure that you, whilst you are going through it you are basically remembering all the essential key details and you don't necessarily have to finish i didn't finish my semen you understand but i did get a nine it's very very important last but not the least uh, component i'm just going to break it down to a and b okay so i'm going to talk about case scenarios okay me personally i use one deca notes i think it's a samson notes but it's a three series notes. so there's a one and one neca one and one neca two one neca three i think it's basically the person who sort of wrote everything down you have to go through that case scenarios no matter what and it took me about six days to go through the case scenarios and then one can notes so i think it's a three like a three three different pdf so she's named it pdf one two and three right so it took me two days for each okay go through the one can notes go go through like all the cases the reason why you have to go through all the cases is that so that like you will know okay so if i get a case of um uh, maybe for example pulmonary embolism or if i get a case of um, child abuse these are some of the questions i need to ask these are some of the questions that um the, the examiner is probably looking for that i have to sort of elicit during my conversation to understand so it's very very important it also help you with your clinical management skills because again like i said the exam is marked on three domains your history your your clinical management and your personal skills okay yes you need to do that and then next thing i want to emphasize on is composure okay you need to have composure you need to you need you need to be very composed and you need to be disciplined okay now the temptation here is that you know what and then one of the things that i feel i feel that one station because of this my very first station was a station that i was i, I don't know i sort of had a knack that i was going to get that case you know i'm not going to mention the case but i had a knack of it and when i went there i saw it i, I was so shocked I, was like, I know this i know the answer but trust me i feel that station both for you okay so you need to have that composure you need to have that composure. because the thing is that when you come across a case that you probably have seen before in the notes or anything like that you are once the patient like once the simulator tells you oh okay this is this you already know what it is so like you are jumping you don't you won't follow the systematic steps mind you it's you're supposed to take a history you're supposed to examine you're supposed to then tell the patient the diagnosis and then manage but if you so for example maybe someone comes and says oh okay, okay i'm going to a sex change and i'm taking over-the-counter drugs like testosterone you know that this is someone who's abusing um, over-the-counter testosterone and probably they're getting a nosebleed and whatnot you know it but you need to take a history okay so you're having notes bleed oh i'm so sorry to hear that how often are you getting is there any headache do your differential diagnosis try to quantify the bleed you understand ask questions what does the simulator do to get it uh, improved or when what when what does he do to sort of help himself you understand questions like that so that you are able to get the diagnosis um, um take the history and get a diagnosis because the examiners there they don't want you to be rehearsed they don't want you to sort of come in and and you, you already know the question so like you feel some type of way right so even if you know it keep your composure and go through the history because they can tell you straightforward some of the simulators i think sort of they are trained like that or something they might give you the answer straightforward and then you because of that you think oh you already know the answer here so i'm just going to jump into management and everything this is not consulting room where once you know the history just put something down and then just jump on you no know, you need to go through the system take a full history then you manage and all that one thing is when you come across a simulator who is just jumping off and, and it's like oh doc um i'll be taking this and this is why i'm bleeding can you help me you know they're going straight to the point okay so this is how you can approach up you can go like okay i understand your concern but just so we are both on the same page so i can better understand your condition i'm going to ask you a few questions to clarify okay so once you say that they'll be like okay okay so that then now you will take control because you all you like you are the doctor you need to take control and this also forms part of your interpersonal school so you need to take control of the conversation but you need to do it in a polite way all right so that is where the interpersonal skills come to all right so i mean i don't want to make the video extremely long but 
Um, these are the five key things that if you are trying to take the exam limited time, you need to be on top of these five key things. And I'm sure you'll be able to ace it. If you have any particular questions or any peculiar difficulties, you can leave a comment, try to reach me out, and I can definitely help. If there's anything else that I remember, I might probably do another video to add it up. But again, the name remains Dr. Brown. Glad we are all on this journey. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe my videos. Thank you and have a good one.